Welcome everyone to another science adventure with Tom K. Today Michael Pittman and I are really excited because finally from our 2016 trip to Germany we've been able to publish our discoveries from there. This one's pretty interesting. It has some technology, it has a century-old mystery, and an icon dethroned. I have with me right here Archaeopteryx, arguably the world's most iconic fossil. This is the Berlin specimen. It's the best one of all of them. It has unbelievable detail, and it was discovered around 1875. If you look closely at this specimen, you can see that it has a dinosaur tail. It has dinosaur teeth, but it also has feathers on the tail and feathers on the wings. So this is a transitional species. It's halfway between a dinosaur and a bird. And when this was first discovered, it created quite a stir. Now, when you discover a new specimen, you usually get to name it. But the Berlin specimen here was not the first one. The Archaeopteryx name was already established when this one was discovered. In fact, a specimen from 1860 holds that distinction. Paleontologist Hermann von Meyer drew this picture of the first specimen. It was the first fossil feather ever found, and it was a stunner. He named it Archaeopteryx, which translates into either ancient feather or ancient wing. And in this 2016 video clip from the basement of the Berlin Museum, I talk about how important this specimen is. So we've been talking all this time about the Berlin specimen of Archaeopteryx, which is the best specimen, but it's not the first. The very first Archaeopteryx is sitting right in front of me here. It's just this little feather. They named Archaeopteryx after just this feather when it was found in 1861. So the whole history of feathers and dinosaurs and all that started right here with this one little specimen. So this little feather holds an important place in paleontological history. Let's take a look at both the drawing and the feather side by side. Do you see a difference? Notice that in the drawing you can see the quill. In the in the current picture, there is no quill in the specimen as it stands today. And this is the hundred plus year old paleontological mystery that we're attempting to solve. No one knows if Von Meyer saw the quill and drew it accurately as he did the rest of the feather, or did he make it up? Or unbelievably, somewhere along the line, the quill disappeared. Nobody knew. And that's the heart of the mystery that we've been investigating. If you've been following our adventures for a while, you know what this is here on the table. This is our laser that we use to fluoresce the fossils. And this time when we went to the Berlin Museum, Dr. Daniela Schwartz, who's also our co-author, was kind enough to grant us access to these specimens, and we didn't disappoint. When we scanned the little feather, the isolated feather from Archaeopteryx, we were able to actually recover the geochemical halo of the quill still on the slab. Now note that the original material that was observed as the quill is now gone. What's left is the chemistry around the halo that indicates where it was. So with this one stroke, we were able to solve the 150-year-old mystery. Yes, Von Meyer was correct. He accurately drew the quill as he saw it. Somewhere in time, we believe that preparation around the edges of the feather mistakenly took off the quill. Nobody knows how or when, but at this point we're able to recover the information so we can continue on with our research. Very exciting. So our quill, or calamus as it's called in scientific terms, why are they important? Well, if you look at these two feathers, they're of similar sizes, but you see that the one quill is almost twice as long as the other. So if you have a big, thick, long quill, it can only come from a few places on the bird. It will be the primary feathers out at the end of the wing, the secondary feathers in from the wing, the tail feathers, and lastly the primary coverts which lay on top of the wing right behind the primaries. 
So if we want to know what the Archaeopteryx feather is, we need to know what the quill looks like to know where it places it. The other thing the quill tells you is what the curvature is. If you can see between these two feathers, one is fairly straight and the other's got a curve to it. So the curvature can also tell you where it goes. Primary feathers tend to be straight, tail feathers also. Curved feathers tend to be secondaries. So if we take this in context and look at our Archaeopteryx feather, what do we find? Like most researchers, we too agree that the tail feathers and the primary feathers are not a good match to the isolated feather of Archaeopteryx. That leaves us with secondaries and the primary coverts. As a secondary, it looks pretty good, but there's a problem. The length to width ratio on this doesn't match. So although it has the shape and the, the kind of hints of a secondary, not a good match, so we discount that. Now recently, the most recent paper about all this was done in 2011 by Ryan Carney. And he took a different approach. He said, well, given the size and the width and all that of this feather, it must be a primary covert, which is a pretty good analysis for that time, considering he also didn't have the quill to go with it. So if we now take a look at primary coverts, which is the current best estimate of what the feather is, we did some research. And in looking around, we found out that all the modern birds have got primary coverts where the quill, the middle of the feather, bends forward of the quill. So it kind of goes up into the airstream. This is different from secondary feathers, which all tend to bend backward. In looking at this, we found out that this is a very consistent characteristic among modern birds. Well, then the question is, is this the way it was in ancient birds? Well, we don't have a picture of the primary covert of Archaeopteryx. Actually, we tried to find one, a good example, on any of the Chinese feathered dinosaurs, too, and we couldn't find one. So that remains an open question. But when you come up against this, you do use modern analogs as your best estimate of what's going on. So in doing that, we can see that modern coverts are represented by an S-shaped curve where the curve extends forward. Now if we compare more than a dozen, which is what we did, primary coverts from modern birds to the curvature of the Archaeopteryx feather, you can see here in this diagram that it's way off. So this leads us to conclude that it is not a primary covert for Archaeopteryx. Well, with that then, we have now run out of options as to where this thing can place on our historic Archaeopteryx specimens. And this is what leads us to believe it is not from any of those specimens. It is actually from another undiscovered species from the Solenhofen limestone. We just haven't seen it yet. It's most likely a secondary feather. And someday we hope to see the specimen that it belongs to, and that would be quite a find. But in 150 years, only one bird, maybe a couple of species now of Archaeopteryx have come out of the Solenhofen limestones, but obviously there's probably more than one or two species there. So we'll see. So this was really a great project. It used new technology to answer an age-old mystery on an iconic specimen. It just doesn't get any better than that. This was also a big up for our laser scanning system because this, this specimen had been scanned in a billion dollar synchrotron and photographed under UV light many times, none of which revealed the chemical halo that we were able to detect. So we're uh, very confident that as we go on to more specimens, we'll make new discoveries and hopefully we'll be back here to talk about them soon. But we can tell you this is a little hint on the upcoming stuff. Uh, the next thing we'll be talking about here is hatchling birds just out of the eggs and what we detected on those guys. Talk to you soon.